Hello everyone, welcome to episode 17 of my fiber podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a podcast about knitting, weaving, spinning yarn and other fiber crafts. Um, yes, uh, I just want to I just want to start this episode by saying that every time I do that little intro, I, I, I hit a wall when I say my name because it is not how I'm used to pronouncing it, so I just feel weird saying it like that. I know I know some people say Audrey. Or I don't ah. Anyway, welcome. I hope you had a lovely week. I did. Um this week's episode is probably going to be a little bit shorter because although I have made some um some good progress I think on the projects that I have on the works right now, um they they are just fewer than before which is really good. I much prefer working on a limited amount of projects rather than being completely overwhelmed and that way I really feel like I'm doing some progress as you will see. Yes, um, I'm just going to start with some weaving and I am very happy to say that I am close to finishing the big commission that I have been working on for the past two months or so. Um, yes, I have finished weaving the main piece. I have tidied the back. Uh, I'm going to insert right now some pictures, some before and after pictures of the back of the big weaving. Um, like I said last time, I couldn't possibly um, weaving all the ends because um, the yarn I've used mostly is quite thin and I would have ended up with really obvious bump and distortions on the front. So what I did was I just um, made knots as tidy as possible and cut them short. Yes, and I am now working on adding a burgundy fringe in the holes that I have left um, in the piece. I have done a first uh, layer and I, I'm going to put a second one. I was hesitant at first, but uh, I lifted the weave up. It's still in its loom, on the loom, obviously. But when I lift it up, um, it seems a bit... Um, empty to me. You can still see through it and it has a little rat tails effect that I don't like. So I'm going to put a second layer, a thinner one, and I think it will look good. Uh, this fringe will actually go under the weaving bands that are right under it. I, um, I put this fringe this morning and I stopped um, because I wanted to record, but also because I have a little bit of a physical issue that started a couple of days ago. Um, I'll talk about that later, but um, I will get it done um, surely this week. And if everything is goes well, I will have it shipped to its recipient um, soon, very soon. Yes. Um, that is all about weaving. Having some issues with positioning my phone to record today, so I do apologize if it's a little bit leaning on one side. I think it's all right now, but I'm not sure. Um, so yes, like uh, I was saying, this is all the weaving I've been working on lately. Um, next projects are a bag for my mom and um, maybe something for my sister's birthday, which is coming up in August. Um, so I'll have to make the time for that. And yes, I can jump into some knitting. I have um, three projects on the go right now. Uh, the first one is my super stripy socks. So this is the first time I'm using stuff stripy yarn for socks and I love it. Um, it's just an effortless, amazing look. Um, it looks all blue, but you actually have a band of a bright purple. So the yarn is by Lothing Yaffle on Etsy. And I have one tube done. I am doing, I am planning to do Afterthoughts heel on these um, 
first time doing after solo seal so uh, I will have to cut through my yarn because I will be doing the, th the true after thought after it's quite hard to say after thought method um, which doesn't require scrap yarn and it's just cutting through the heel um, there's a video that probably everybody has already seen on YouTube right now by Kirby Warby about this uh, so that is what I'm going to do but I have done one two they're gonna be quite long because I expect my heel to fall somewhere here so they're gonna be quite long leg socks but we should such lovely stripes that out to be right um these are 60 stitches and i have knitted them on 2.25 millimeter needles on my nine inch circulars and i have done um, a normal my usual wedged toe and yep one down and I am working on the second one and I have got I have advanced quite a lot on on the second one as well. I believe I'm only missing one yeah, I'm only missing one um stripe repeat and yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. They they are going to match, even though I found that sometimes the color repeats were a bit shorter. Um, well, they were not perfectly even, so I had to try and knit a bit looser to catch up some length or knit tighter in other um, in other places. But yeah, they're okay. It's just at this point, especially that they they're not perfect. But I think I am still going to be able to do it with the same number of stripes. Um, and place the heels at the same position too. I hope so. I am not obsessing uh, on them being perfectly matching, but that would be nice if they were if they weren't slightly off. I mean, I would prefer them to be completely off rather than slightly off. I <laughs> just yeah. If there's a tiny tiny bit of um, of a difference it's going to bug me whereas if I had started the sock on a different color I would I wouldn't mind them not much at all but that's not what I did I did start with the same color so I am trying to make them match and so far so good so far so good um, I really like the yarn it's not perfect i know some people are bothered by it i i don't mind it it's just as you can see sometimes inside the colors there are some um specks of other colors it's not especially in this blue but it's hand dyed so i perfectly know what it is to hand dye yarn and to not have something perfect and it still looks beautiful so yeah i believe these will be done uh, quite soon um because i want to make some socks for my boyfriend in the next couple of weeks so i have to get rid of those uh i have all of this stuff so still a, cons a consequent um length of yarn because it's lovely gum stoppable and yes it's getting tangled everywhere do, do, do. Uh, so that is my first work in progress my second one is i have started working on my saturate shawl last time i showed you uh not last time the time before i think i showed you my color choice and i have done some progress on it and needles poking so this is she calls it a half pie shawl uh, meaning that while it's on the needles it's gonna have a funny shape but let me show you the right side so it's decent where's the right side i think this side that's the right side that's what i have so far so this is the saturate shawl by um, orange knits and it is um, a fading, 
a fading show. Basically, you're using five colors and Orange Knit has developed a way of fading colors into each other, which is like a organized randomness, so to say, um, so that the color don't stripe and you have an efficient blending of the different colors. And it looks really good. Uh, she also has that technique for socks and it really looks good with highly variegated yarns and speckled yarn and even colors that you would think aren't perfectly fading. They work, they work wonderfully and I am especially happy with how mine has turned out so far. Um, the two colors I'm using to begin with is this is Teacup by Hedgehog Fibers and this is Heyday by Hedgehog Fibers as well. And even though they have the same cream base, you can still see how smooth the transi transition is. Like you can't, you can't, um, you can't see any sort of weirdness happening here. Um, and I have my hair everywhere. And yeah, I'm not so far from popping in my third color, which I'm sorry, needles clicking. Popping in my third color, which will be this uh, one of a kind skein by Made by Black Elephant. And it looks very similar to Heyday except instead of being a cream base, it's a grey base. So yeah, and this, I'm going to cut teacups soon and I have a ton left. I think I'm going to have a lot of leftovers of um, from this show as well, so I'll have to figure out another fade project to use my leftovers in. Uh, and I'm using singles. Um, it's the first time I'm working with singles. It's nice, um, nothing special about it so far. Um, I enjoy the drape it gives, I enjoy how smooth and soft it is and yeah, you can see my little eyelets that are hopefully going to look much neater when I'm going to block the shawl. But yes, and a little eye cord edge. It's the first time I've, do, I've done this. Um, it's easier than you think. I am still... The pattern looks really... It looked really complicated to me and was a bit scared at first, but when you break it down and it is especially well written and easy to read, um, it, it, it's, it's simple, like there's nothing complicated. But yeah, you know, when you just read the pattern and since you don't have the the stitches in front of you, you, you don't really understand and it's always scarier. So the, the way the pattern goes is that it will increase and then there is a border section and that border section, I don't quite understand how that works. But anyway, um, I know that when I'll get to it, it'll be much clearer. And yeah. Easy patterns, interesting. Uh, I can't do it when I'm watching a movie or something. I I can watch it when I'm I can I can work on it when I'm watching a podcast or something because I'm not I don't have to pay much attention to the podcast. I just listen to it, so it works. But yeah, if I want to watch a movie, I can't do it. You have to commit to it. So. I guess that's also why it grows so fast and yeah, I can't wait to see how my next colors are going to fade into each other and this shawl has a fringe, a massive fringe and it's going to be glorious and I can't wait to see it grow and add in my next colors. I'm really happy with that project. I keep looking at it now and I, I just want to keep knitting on it. So I think that's what I will do when I finished recording. Um, yes, my last knitting uh, work in progress is the flax sweater that I am knitting for my boyfriend out of 
some hand dyed, some yarn that I hand dyed myself, and everything is tangled in earphones and cables because I am alternating skins for this, so I have like two two balls attached. I've done a lot of progress on it. I finished the body. Oh my god. There it is. <laughs> I finished the body. And I have started one sleeve. And um, the way the pattern does the sleeve is for a really long sleeve. So I tried it on and I think I'm... Because if it's not my boyfriend, but I can um, kind of judge how the sizing is going uh, from trying it on myself. Um, and I think like this is a good half of the of the sleeves already so yeah I am happy with our stop clicking I am happy with our the yarn um, knitted itself uh, I've been alternating you can't really tell um, any sort of big difference well you can kind of see because I have five I had five skeins um, and they were all really different so you can tell that when I dropped the lighter skein here the ones that are there were slightly less uh, different in color so you can see there's a transition but it does not shock me I hope hope my boyfriend won't mind either it doesn't look odd to me there are still some specks of um, really light gray, gray, green in this, um, well, at some, in some spots it does look gray, but yeah, can't speak and I'm being bothered by the dog. In and out. He is scratching the mat and being really noisy right now. Ah. Uh, Yes, so sweater knitting, um, endless docknet, um, even if there's a garter panel on the sleeves, it's still, um, it's still just plain, uh, plain knitting. And um, yes, I don't quite like knitting sleeves. Um, I'm doing magic loop and it's just, I find it a bit annoying. Um, but it's going fast and smooth, so. Hopefully, I will have the sweater done um, before I go on holiday, so that I can um, I can leave all those big projects. And I think this will be. <laughs> I was going to say that I think this will be my last just stockinette sweater for a while, but then I remembered that I want to do the sofaded sweater by Andrea Maury. Yeah, although there's an interest in color changing, so I think it's gonna be okay. I think I might do that um, during the summer as well. This will be my next sweater for me because I have heavier sweater plans. So yeah, I think I'd, I'd much rather do the so faded now um, and leave all the heavy worsted um, sweaters that I have in plan for the autumn and yes so I'm not done with the stockinette <laughs> but it's fine it's okay so I believe I'm done with knitting then and I have a couple of other bits and pieces to talk about um I've done a little bit of spinning um, you're not going to see any difference from last time because it's just still my Turkish spindle and my dyed red fiery merino but it's, it's becoming quite um, quite bulky there so I'm happy it's been uh, drastically colder here even cold like I'm wearing my find your fade right now um, so I've been able to spin to an extent and um, yeah I'm not seriously following the tour de fleece why did I say it you see 
I, I believe I talked about how you stupidly say words that are in your mother language with a foreign accent when you're talking in this foreign accent. So, le tour de fleece. Uh, I'm not really following it because my spindles. <laughs> but yeah, it's just that I feel like there's no competition when I see on Instagram that people have already um, spun like 600 yards of their thing and I'm like, yeah, yeah, maybe I've done a meter or so on my trigger spindle. Um, but I do have... Um, I do have some spinning plan for the upcoming months, let's say. I want to finish this and make it a two-ply and then I have um, two other ideas. Um, let me grab them. So three, three spinning plans um, to be done whenever. Once I'll be done with that, um, with that fiery red two-ply, that will be for my Etsy shop. Uh, I want to spin this for me. This is a merino nylon blend, so this will be um, merino. It's not merino. Yes, it is. It's merino. Um, this will be for socks. I want to try to spin um, sock yarn and actually knit socks out of it. And this uh, fancy 3D braid is by Pirate and Wool on Etsy. And I can't see a colorway name, but oh well. It's this lovely blue, green, gray, and pops of orange. So yeah, I'm planning on making it a three ply, a chain ply, I think, to keep like a color, a consistent color repeat, and have socks knitted out of it. So this will be my next spinning plan. After that, I have some silk hankies that I got from Snow Day Spinning, I think that's the name of her shop. Uh, she's on Etsy, she's a UK um, dyer. I think she has some yarn and she has some silk hankies. So I'm going to try to take them off without damaging them or making too much noise. Ugh, one of the hankies got caught in scotch. It's fine, it's free now. I have three. This is the first one, which is a just a blue, hand dyed blue. So if you don't know what silk hankies are, they're like flat uh, sheets of fiber that you peel off and that you can spin like that. I have a blue, I have a cream with little bits of pink and some sort of silvery haze to it and then I have a more colorf colorful one this one which is lovely autumnal shades I really like it I think this will be the first one I'll spin and yeah I didn't um when you're handling silk it's better to have your hands um smooth to have done like a scrub before um I think this will be the first one I'll spin because it, it it really is beautiful. I have about this is this is like a third of it. This is alpaca. Yes, I have a problem with alpaca. Um, this is simple undyed alpaca roving. It's so soft um, that I want to spin as a two ply and knit a shawl out of it. Uh, I have an idea about the shawl I want to make, it's, and I forgot its name, but I'll put it in in the description down below. It's a shawl that is that has like a cable lace effect that looks like a braid on one side, and I figured that texture could look, could look okay with hand spun. So, yeah, I have 600 gram of these, and the pattern, I think the pattern doesn't call for much yardage, but that I have more than enough. Um, so yeah, this is quite a long-term uh, spinning plan um, because on spindles it's going to take me forever, but this is what I plan to do um, 
as part, as part of my spinning journey. And since Tour de Fleece are, has started, I just thought I'd share, um, I'd share those plans. If you don't know what Tour de Fleece is, it's um, kind of a spin-along organized at the same time of, as the Tour de France, which is the cycling event. I don't know why, um, yeah, because the spinning wheel cycle, maybe that's why. Anyway, <laughs> and people all around the world are spinning together and sharing their plans and progress and the meters that they've been spinning either on wheels or on spindle and it's really nice um people are some people are having some heavy spin along and are do, really doing it um going strong with it um uh, like i said i'm not uh, but yeah i just thought i'd uh, show you my uh, my plants my fiber plants and I think that going and yeah is kind of my transition. I probably do that about ten thousand times during an episode. I need to I need to figure out another way of jumping from one subject from one subject to another. I can cannot just go like so because yeah. See? Anyway, cross <laughs> Stitch is the last uh, the last thing I'll be showing you uh, today. I am still working on my little foxes. Uh, this is a kit that I got from the World in Stitches on Etsy and I have done a little bit of progress. And what you cannot see is the white here and here and here and a little bit here. Stitching white on white mm -mm. not so pleasant um I, I don't know i felt like i was going blind i couldn't see anything but i understand why you have to do it because you can't have a shape and nothing in the middle even if your cloth is is white uh it will just look odd as far as texture goes but yeah it was not, not so um not so good to do, uh, but yeah, one fox is almost down, done, down, yeah, down, come. it's just missing uh, some part of its neck, and yes. I think I'll be working on that more this week, because, and <laughs> we're coming into what I was talking to you about, at the beginning of the episode, uh, my physical issue sounds so dramatic. No, I just, I just have a, you know, when you hurt your um, ligament, something, you know, like the stretchy thing that ties your muscle to your bones. I don't know what I did because this is my left hand, so this is ridiculous. And I thought that I just slept badly, you know, that I slept like my hands like this. But it's the third day now and ouch. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is also why I can't spin so much because obviously flicking the spindle with my left hand because I have to do it with my left hand, not a good idea. Yeah, I don't know how that happened because I'm a thrower, so when I knit, it's this hand, not this one. Wait, anyway. Uh, it even hurt, like I said this morning, when I cut the fringe for the weaving. So silly. Uh, I am trying to let it rest, so yeah. I probably will slow down on my knitting and yeah, I can cross stitch because I'm mostly using my right hand so it's fine, this one will, able, will be able to rest. But yeah, silly, silly me, um, I'll just have to be more careful I guess and um, then my 80 years old body will stop. Um, reminding me that you cannot just 
um, do intense, <laughs> intense knitting work seven days a week and pretty much starting when I wake up until when I fall asleep. But anyway, yeah. Um, next week's episode um, will probably be the last for a little while. Um, not because of that, even though I might not have as much content to show you because of that, because of my hand, but um, it's also because I am going on a holiday for two weeks. Um, so obviously there will be no podcast at this time and I won't be knitting as much. And after that, um, I am supposed to be working. So um, less knitting done and I am unsure about my schedule yet. So I might be able to throw in an episode during the month of August, but... Um, I do think that, sadly, I won't be able to podcast as regularly as usual for uh, the rest of the summer. Um, yeah, I will still share my um, projects and things on Instagram, so if you care to follow along there, uh, you might get more updates uh, for the rest of the summer. But I will still be there next week with hopefully one or two finished objects and a better hand. Um, so that's it for this week, guys. Uh, like I said, shorter than usual, um, but still quite a few projects to show. So I wish you a happy day, night and week, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.